So hi students, as a part of uh, the corrosion unit, already I have discussed about uh, uh, one of the dry or chemical corrosion, which is the oxidation corrosion or the corrosion by the oxygen gas. So today I am going to discuss the remaining two, that is corrosion by the other gases and the liquid metal corrosion, which is a part of the dry or the chemical corrosion. Now coming to the corrosion by other gases. So corrosion by other gases means, so see, the environment or atmosphere comprises of so many gases other than the oxygen, right? So it comprises of the nitrogen gas, hydrogen sulfide gas, uh, the sulfur dioxide glass, gas, gas, uh, the chlorine gas. So many gases are a part of the environment. Now the question is, when we are discussing about corrosion by other gases, whether all the gases can attack the metal surface? This question should be arise in your mind. Because so many gases are a part of the atmosphere. It doesn't mean that all the gases will attack all the metal surfaces. Now what are those gases which attack the metal surface? So this particular corrosion by the other gases totally or absolutely depends upon the Chemical affinity means attraction between the between the metal and the gases. That is, to whatever the gas, the metal is affinity or attractive, only that particular gas will attack that particular metal surface. In order to exemplify, in order to exemplify the silver, silver is a metal, right? So silver metal is affinity towards the chlorine gas. So since uh, the silver is affinity towards the chlorine gas, only the chlorine gas will attack the silver metal surface, resulting in the formation of silver chloride, which can be illustrated in this fashion. Which can be illustrated in this fashion. 2Ag is attacked by chlorine gas, resulting in the formation of 2AgCl. Why this attack is taking place? Because this particular silver is affinity or attractive only towards the chlorine gas. That is the reason the chlorine gas is attacking the silver metal surface resulting in the formation of the silver chloride. And this silver chloride which is being formed, which is being formed on the surface of the silver metal, on the surface of the silver metal is the thin film. Is the thin film. And this thin film which is going to be developed on the surface of the silver metal whenever it is attacked by the chlorine gas which is affinity or attracted towards it is stable. Is stable. I from the previous video it is amply clear that if the if the metal oxide or the thin film which is going to be formed on the surface of the metal is stable further corrosion is not possible further corrosion is not possible means what further wet or electrochemical corrosion is not possible because the wet or electrochemical corrosion is the one which is the major destroyer of the metal but not the dry or chemical corrosion students now, as it is the stable thin film which is going to be developed on the surface of the silver metal whenever it is attacked by the chlorine gas, so definitely the further wet or electrochemical corrosion is not possible. That is the reason silver won't undergo any sort of corrosion. In a similar fashion, the tin is also affinity towards the chlorine gas. As the tin is affinity towards the chlorine gas, the chlorine gas attacks the tin surface, which can be illustrated in this fashion. Tin, as it is affinity towards the chlorine gas, two moles of chlorine gas attacks the tin metal surface, resulting in the formation of tin tetrachloride. And this tin tetrachloride is a thin film, is a thin film which is going to be formed on the surface of the tin metal whenever it is attacked by the chlorine gas and this particular thin film is volatile and thin, this th thin film which is going to be formed on the surface of the tin is volatile 
So since it is volatile, what will happen already I have explained clearly in the previous video. There are four types of uh, the metal oxides or thin films are going to be formed on the surface of the metal whenever the metal surface is attacked by the atmospheric gases. So what are those? Stable, unstable, volatile and porous. Whenever the volatile metal oxide or volatile thin film is being formed on the surface of the metal then what happens to this volatile already i have clearly explained about uh, the volatile metal oxide in the similar fashion in a similar fashion whatever the thin film which is a tin tetrachloride which is formed on the surface of the tin as it is volatile in nature rapid wet or electrochemical corrosion why rapid wet or electrochemical corrosion takes place whenever the metal oxide or thin film which is going to be formed on the surface of the metal is volatile. I have clearly explained in the previous video. If there is any ambiguity in this video, please do watch that. Now as this is volatile, it is unproductive. It is unprotective, that is the thin film is unprotective which will not protect uh, the wet or electrochemical corrosion of the tin. So this is about uh, the corrosion by the other gases, corrosion by the other gases. Now this particular corrosion by the gases, either it is oxygen gas which results in the formation of oxidation corrosion or it is uh, the corrosion by the other gases, whatever it is, whatever it is, the corrosion by the gases is driven by one of the rule. That rule, which is the driving force for uh, the corrosion by the atmospheric gases under dry conditions and undergo the chemical corrosion, is spilling backward through is pilling backwards rule. So pilling backwards rule will drive the corrosion by corrosion by the gases on the surface of the metal under dry conditions. Now let us see what is the pilling backwards rule. So pilling backwards rule states that whatever the metal oxide which is being formed whenever the metal surface is attacked by the oxygen gas or whatever the thin film which is going to be formed on the surface of the metal whenever uh, whenever the metal is uh, attacked by the fe 2 gas on the surface of it is considered to be protective is considered to be protective if the volume of it is slightly more than volume of the metal surface volume of it is slightly more than volume of the metal surface that is, whatever the metal oxide or thin film which is going to be formed on the surface of the metal during the chemical or uh, the dry corrosion, its volume should be more than the volume of the metal surface, then it will act like an umbrella. It will act, act as an umbrella. So, umbrella is the one which protects us from the sunshine as well as from the rainwater right now how should be the umbrella its volume should be more when compared to us whenever its volume is more it is bigger than us then only it will protect us from the sunshine or the rain droplets otherwise it will not be capable of protecting us from the sunshine or the rainwater droplets so in the similar fashion the filling bedwork rule states that uh, Whatever the metal oxide which is going to be formed on the surface of uh, the metal or the thin film which is going to be formed on the surface of the metal is protective if, if its volume is more than uh, the volume of the metal surface. That is for example, let us say that uh, this is the metal surface, this is the metal surface, this is the metal surface, this is the metal surface. Now, Whatever the metal oxide which is going to be formed on the surface of the metal, its volume should be more than the metal surface. So, this red color indicates the metal surface. 
and this black color indicates the metal oxide or thin film which is being formed on the surface of the metal whenever the metal is attracted by the atmospheric gases now see here see here whatever the metal oxide or thin film which is going to be formed on the surface of this particular run metal surface is more than the metal surface so it lacks like an umbrella and shields uh, the wet or electrochemical corrosion of the metal wet or electrochemical corrosion of the metal and the wet or electrochemical corrosion of the metal is the one which is the major destroyer of the metal so this is about the pilling verb role so now we are going to discuss uh, the third uh, dry or chemical corrosion which is liquid metal corrosion liquid metal corrosion so the name itself suggests something liquid metal corrosion so this particular corrosion takes place at high temperatures whenever whenever the liquid metal is allowed to pass or allowed to flow on the surface of the solid metal at high temperatures then this particular liquid metal corrosion takes place then this particular liquid metal corrosion takes place right so how let us see so let us say that this is a solid metal friends this is a solid metal solid metal and uh, this red color represent uh, the liquid metal this is a liquid metal. is liquid metal. Red color is liquid metal. Liquid. Now, whenever the liquid metal is allowed to flow or pass through the solid metal at high temperatures, keep this in the mind. At high temperature, what happens is these liquid metals penetrate inside the solid metal. Penetrate inside the solid metal. Whenever the liquid metal at high temperature is penetrating inside the solid metal, what will happen to the bonds present uh, which are holding the adjacent uh, metals, uh, adjacent atoms together? They will break. Right? Let us say that these are the bonds which are holding the adjacent atoms together. These are the bonds which are holding the adjacent atoms together. Now what happens is at high temperature whenever the liquid metal is allowed to pass or flow through the solid metal then liquid metal molecules penetrate inside the solid metal. Whenever the liquid metal molecules penetrate inside the solid metal what happens is the bonds between the adjacent atoms of the solid metal that is the bonds between the adjacent atoms of the solid metal metal are being broken that is thereby weakening of the bonds takes place and weakening of the bonds takes place means what term what does it mean breakage of the bonds so breakage of the bonds means what term breakage of the bonds means what term damage of the metal damage of the metal means destruction or deterioration of and destruction or deterioration of the metal is called as corrosion. Is called as corrosion. So to exemplify, I will consider one of the example. So in the nuclear reactor, usually the cadmium rods are being used. Cadmium rods, which are the solid metal, and cadmium rods are being used to control the fission of uranium or plutonium. Now, as the nuclear reactor is operated at the high temperatures, these cadmium rods are associated with high temperatures. Now, in order to cool these cadmium rods, which are associated with high temperatures in the nuclear reactor, we will add the sodium metal as the coolant. Now, sodium metal is the liquid metal, which is the coolant. Whenever it is added to the cadmium metal, what happens 
as uh, this cadmium rods are associated with high temperature at high temperature what happens students the liquid metal what is the liquid metal here the sodium metal penetrate inside the cadmium rods which are controlling the fission of the uranium or plutonium so when they are penetrating inside the cadmium rod what happens the weakening of the bonds weakening of the adjacent part adjacent bonds which are a part of the cadmium rod takes place resulting in the formation of destruction or deterioration of the cadmium rod the destruction or deterioration of the cadmium rod is the thing by atom corrosion yeah the cadmium rod is a solid metal and the sodium metal which is being uh, used as a coolant is a liquid metal so this is about the uh, liquid metal corrosion so with this i have finished the dry or chemical corrosion so i hope you understood this particular uh, corrosion that the first one is oxidation corrosion or corrosion by oxygen gas which are a part of uh, the dry or chemical corrosion the second one is corrosion by the other gases i am part of the third uh, liquid metal corrosion i do remember that uh, corrosion by any gas either it is oxygen gas or other gases is driven by one of the rule which is nothing but pilling berger rule pilling berger rule now in the next video i am going to discuss about uh, the very important corrosion that is the wet or electrochemical corrosion which is the major destroyer of the metal which is the one which basically distract or deteriorate the metal thank you